lots of questions. We have some answers. <laughs> Dexter, what are we talking about? Well, that was insightful, but we have lots to share with you. Yes. So stay tuned. Yeah. You ready to kick this off? I'm so ready. Let's do it. Let's do it. it. Uh, uh. Uh -huh. to share our personal experience with traveling with the cat which we've done for a couple years now let me just say this guy when we adopted him he was not an outdoorsy cat we never let him go outside and so homebody inside house cat yeah that all of a sudden we were like yep we're gonna take you on the road and we're gonna drive 3,000 miles across the country and let's hope for the best let's go for it we always recommend taking like experimental trial runs before you hit the road full time. Do a couple test drives with your cat and or cats, um, especially if they've never been on the road. And if they do terrible, it doesn't mean that you can't do it. We actually took him on a couple car rides. <laughs> yeah. And he didn't like it, but it just helped him acclimate. We also can respect that each cat has kind of like its own personality. Yes. So what goes for Dexter here may not go for your little furry uh, animals at home. Let's talk about how we actually travel with him. We looked at cages because, you know, right. they make these cages for cats that are like really, really tiny, which are good for going to the vet. Well, <laughs> well we, what we uh, bought one for a medium size Dog. Rottweiler. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so we have a really, and we still use it, an oversized cage. So that way he could stretch his legs, but yeah. it, we could still carry it. He enjoys it. I mean, he likes his little seclusion space. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like a safe space for him to refer back to. Uh, things we like to try to implement while on the road and traveling with him is like making it a familiar environment. Yeah. Like, what do you say? Like, we really enjoy putting like blankets that smell familiar or uh, cat toys that he might be familiar with and mm -hmm. like some of his favorite toys. Just anything to kind of ease the new environment that he's exposed to uh, while traveling on the road. We have friends that travel on the road with their cat and they just they just let their cat roam around the vehicle, which is totally fine. I think both is great. It depends on also what kind of personality your cat has. If they like to really look out the window and yeah. explore, this guy is kind of more of a, it's time to take a nap and sleep in Introvert. the cage. Kind yeah. of revert back to the safe space. But we can't say like, that we have any safety recommendations. I know a lot of our concerns are like, what if we got in an accident while on the road? Worst case scenario, if we were in a car accident, I would like to know that he's in his cage. If there's a way for him to like run out of the car and escape, I don't want that to be a possibility. I just totally. want him to be in his little space. So if there's a problem, he's not gonna run away. It's an easy reference point to right. find him in case something went wrong. For the most part, I try to implement, we use the cage. Yeah, the cage is good. Keep him in the cage, it's in a safe spot. And then when we get to our destination, I don't have to chase him around the vehicle to get him out. When it's time to put the slides in of your RV, have your cat in the carrier or in the car ready to go. <laughs> yeah, yes, I see where right? this was going. Our first right. rig, it only had one slide out and it was only 27 feet, but we decided you know, we'll load Dexter up last. That way he can stretch his legs for every last second he mm -hmm. can. But the thing is, is animals are, they're so smart, you know? Mm -hmm. We think that they don't know they know. And guess what? Cats can fit in really tight spaces that we cannot. <sighs> the distance between our slide out and the wall to get to the bedroom was like this, I think. I mean, it was so, yeah, let me see. Can we see that? Yeah, I'd say. So as soon as the slide went in, or I mean, he just knew. He ran right back to the bedroom, and we played this game where <clears throat> the slide would go in and out, in and out. We'd get him out of the way, we'd put the slide back in, he would find a way to run back in. <laughs> and guess what? We learned from experience, because that's what you yeah. do, and that's how life is. Uh, you can't call a cat. Hey, little guy. <laughs> it's time to go on a road trip. When it's time to put the slides in, and everything's packed. I get Dexter in the cage and get him in the car right away. Yeah. We were actually concerned because when we first hit the road, we were very set on, you know, we're gonna take these breaks where he's gonna be able to get some water and, 
use this litter box because we had no idea how many hours we were going to be driving. Yeah. So let's talk about the litter box situation. There are some people that like to take the litter box in the car because we have people who do this yeah. and their cat uses it on the road. But we learned by research on the fancy internet that cats can hold their bladder supposedly for up to 16 hours. Yeah, which is pretty concerning because even though they can do that, we never want to put him in a situation where he has to do that, right? Yes. So it's a fine balance of knowing that these animals, maybe protectively when they're in a stressful situation, can hold their bladders for that long. A long time. It's very dependent upon your furry animal and the situation you guys are presented with. We had concerns with when we first hit the road was, what are we gonna do about his litter box? Like if we need to stop, I mean, it's not as easy as taking a dog on a leash. Our recommendations were making frequent stops on the road to allow them not only to stretch their legs, but maybe get some food and water. You pull over and offer them water, that's totally fine, or in the car. I would not recommend having a water bowl in your car. No. <laughs> <laughs> that would probably not go over so well. And they probably want nothing to do with it so either. So basically what I'm trying to say is don't focus 100% on trying to set up your car to be like this cat oasis and here's the bed over here and here's the litter box and here's some water and here's your here's your headphones and your blanket. Although Just, they expect none the less from yes, you. Yes, they will me. expect that you'll do that, but don't feel like you need to um, totally. when you're traveling. Don't You're going to end up stressing out more than the cat. He's not interested in drinking water after a couple hours. Like I said, he's just glad to be back in the trailer and out of the car. Yes, totally. Back in like a familiar environment. Then he can use... The litter box ah. oh here's a question that we always get what and it's a very i know a lot of you people know the answer to this but i feel like we need to talk about it what is it do you guys keep your cat in your trailer while you drive <laughs> oh my gosh yeah so that's a big question we even considered when we first started because yeah. we had no idea do animals travel in the back where the bed is, like where it's super comfy and where it's familiar, as we had discussed earlier, it's a really familiar environment. Guys, Maybe they can be more relaxed. Guys, don't. Don't do it. Don't do it. Totally. We don't have personal experience with it, but no. there are so many things that could fall and totally. break and open. I can't imagine Ugh. going 60 miles per hour down the highway with your cat just bouncing. He's not gonna like the RV <laughs> much more. Now, if you're- no. If you're driving a, a motor home, you know, your class A, class B, class C, mm -hmm. that's a little different because now they can roam around. Yeah, Motorized. I wouldn't be able to touch on that because we have a pole behind. And... Yeah, we always had a pole behind. Don't put your cat and touching on the pet or dog yeah. in your trailer while you're driving. It's too dangerous. Especially making sudden brakes and accelerations Oof. in the vehicle can throw. You, you just don't want any harm to be done to your furry loved one. If, so yeah, and if anybody has a personal story, throw them in the comments because yeah, we want to know. I want to know like how it went, or do you throw like a, a person in the back that you're? I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe just sick of like you know one have of the you, family members put them in the back. You know. Have you been thrown in the trailer because maybe you're just talking too much? Uh, secret safe with us. Okay. <laughs> the issue related to um, cats getting sick while traveling. One tip is to custom them to being in a car. So before you hit the road, like we talked about before. Yeah, taking little mini trips early and often. Take some trips with them. I think there could be like some similarities between animals and humans. And one of those things are we're all prone to getting car sickness. Yeah. So take something out of the equation of emptying their stomach. They might be used to getting fed in the morning, but yeah. if you're going to take off in the morning, maybe bump up feeding time a couple hours earlier. Right. Just make sure they don't have a full belly, basically, before they take off. It's just less of a chance that they're going to get sick. If the, if the cat gets sick and it's related to anxiety, yeah. Um, they can receive some type of sedative over or the like counter. Or like an antihistamine or yeah. something like that. So um, I, that's where I would talk to your veterinarian. Totally. Because they can recommend the exact medication. I am not an expert when it comes to giving animals any kind of pills. Yeah, we're just nurses, so you know, we yeah. work with animals. We do people pills, but not people animal pills. pills. Not animal pills. So, <laughs> <laughs> where to put the litter box? Oh my gosh, that's a rough one. I don't want to say we bought our current RV 
keeping in mind the litter box, but we kind of bought it keeping in mind where the litter box was going to I mean, go. Let's be real. This that was a RVs big deal. for the cat. Our key spot is below the sink, taking out that door and putting a little drape where he can just go underneath in and out of the sink. The cool thing about cats is they're super adaptive. So when you just teach them where the litter box has been changed to or the, a change in place, all you got to do is take them there a couple times to yeah. familiarize them with it. And then most of the times they just pick it up and it they becomes a familiar spot. Pick it up and go with it. There's also concern about uh, the smell of the cat litter box. And I can tell you, Oof, yeah, we've never had an issue. No, never. <laughs> <laughs> No, honestly, it's we, not we can bad. Say, no, it's totally not bad. I mean, there's times where it smells like he just used the litter box, but yeah. because um, if you're using really good grade cat litter, that smell is gone within minutes. Totally. And you know, I, all you got to do is stay up on scooping out the litter box. Yeah. Just your normal things. It would bother me more if we if our cat litter box was in the kitchen or the big living area. Yeah. But being in the bathroom, it's like. It's a it's it's a fine place to be stinky. Totally out of sight, out of mind. Everyone could be stinky in there. It's cool. fine. We love it. Cool. Cat litter is gonna go everywhere, mm -hmm. and we like to keep it contained mostly in the bathroom. Getting out of the shower, and stepping into some crisp, oh, fresh litter on worst. my clean feet. I so mean, we... it's the best. I love it. <laughs> it's all authentic. I have a broom in the bathroom mm -hmm. that I just sweep it into one pile and I do this a couple times a day, especially while I'm about to get into the shower. I sweep it up in the pile, vacuum it real quick, it's done. Yeah, and then as soon as it's done, he goes right back in and <laughs> sprays it everywhere else again. <laughs> he loves it, it's like a fun little game. Yeah. Family fun. Please don't base leaving your house on a trip based on not having a spot to put your cat litter box. It will be fine. Totally. People I know have put it in the bedroom, people have put it in their living space. Like I said, if you keep up with scooping, if you keep air fresheners close by, if you have really good cat litter, it shouldn't be a problem. We also like to drive during the daytime. He hates like said, not being able to see, and he lets us know every second of it. Yeah, and as soon he lets us know if it's getting too late because as soon as it starts to get dark and you can tell as it's transitioning to dark, he starts to get a little bit more anxious and cries yeah. more. Long story short, Take your cat for a ride several times a day during the night. Yes. See what works. Yeah, because absolutely. Because every cat is different. And they'll let you know about it pretty quickly. Yes. <laughs> Disclaimer, this should go without saying, but besides all the advice you have on the internet and YouTube about traveling with your cat, please yeah. talk to your veterinarian before you hit the road for many reasons. Think about getting your cat microchipped Oh, totally. And making sure all their vaccinations are up to date. That's super important. And I don't think the microchipping is very expensive whatsoever. And it's a little peace of mind as well. Yes, because even though we don't let Dexter outside unattended or pretty much outside in general, we've had a couple instances where he accidentally got out where the screen door wasn't shut all the way. And I yeah. think he went to stretch his arms mm. on the screen door and boop. Next thing you right know, out. he's outside and none of us knew about it until you Animal. were outside and outside. saw him. Make sure all your vaccinations, all their records are traveling with you guys because those are important documents as you're hopping across states. You want to have all those readily available to you guys. So when it comes to controlling the temperatures inside your RV for your little mm -hmm. furry ones, a big thing is, is leaving them throughout the day or night to make sure they're not too hot or too cold. And one thing that we use that we have no affiliation with, but we like to bring it up, is a little device that is from RV Pet Safety. It basically runs off its own network, so you don't have to have Wi-Fi for it to work. It's almost like a little jetpack, and you could put it anywhere in your RV. I recommend keeping it somewhere where you can keep it charged because it does have a battery on it. Oh, yeah. And it sends you alerts based on how you set it. You could set like a range for if it gets below a certain temperature of it being too cold or above a temperature of being too hot, it will send you an alert via your iPhone or Android mm -hmm. and make you aware that you can come and check up on them wherever you are. Yeah. Just and gives you could... a little peace of mind. Let us know in the comments if you have any other suggestions that we might be able to use because we're always looking for something better. I think that pretty much covers a lot of traveling with cats. Thanks for watching our video and yeah, you know, hopefully we provided some good advice, but if you already travel on the road with a cat and you have any 
advice that we missed? Let us know. Oh. We are so curious to know what other tips and tricks there are for cats out there, especially when totally. you're driving 3,000 miles across the country. So, oh yeah. If you guys like this video, show us some love. Subscribe, like, comment below so we can hear from you. It's been awesome. I'm gonna be waiting for the comments. Yes. I'm super excited to see what's out there. Yeah, I think a lot of people have some fun stuff to share with cats. Absolutely. <laughs> Hashtag cat life. <laughs> Stop looking at the light. Poor guy. Give him some carrots.